Psalm 143 verse 8 says this, Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. And in the NIV it says, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. Each new day is God saying, I have more for you, child. In Psalm 5, verse 3, it says this, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. The psalmist oftentimes shared how he would go before the Lord as soon as he awoke, that it was the morning sacrifice that brought an awakening to his purpose and identity, that he didn't let the day come to him until he brought himself before the Lord. You see, you have nothing to offer anyone else until you offer yourself up to him. And unwrapping the day with prayer is how you discover that life is a gift. And I, I've had this on my heart and I wanted to start with those verses, but I, I, I want to read something out of Mark chapter 1 that's just been burning in my heart. And I oftentimes find that busyness is the prideful excuse to put off what's really going on in your heart, put off dealing with what's in your heart. And when you awake in the morning, One of the most prideful things you could do is start the day without talking to the one who created it. Initiating the day without prayer is to welcome deception. When you wake up and start the day with him, you immediately discover heaven's gold mine. And that protects you and helps you from settling for any inferior desire, lover, or giving your attention or affection to an unworthy subject. He is what sets the standard of love for your day and for everything you do. And that's why you need to meet with him in the morning, early. I share this with you today to spark something in you that every day you would make it a practice that before the soles of your feet touch the ground, you acknowledge the one who created everything. When it comes to pursuing God in the morning, in the early hours, there's no better example or person to look at than Jesus himself. And in Mark chapter one, we find Jesus having an eventful, successful day of ministry. He cast out a demon out of somebody in the synagogue. And then after that, he's, he goes to Peter's house and heals his mother-in-law of a fever. And then the next thing he knows, the whole village, the whole town is bringing sick people and bringing people that need to have demons cast out. And Jesus heals all of them and delivers all of them. And you would think after you've had such a busy day, such a exhaustive day and so much to be excited about and so many accomplishments and momentum that you would just think that you would ride that wave and just be super excited and just can't wait to start doing it all over again the next day. But we find in verse 35 of Mark chapter one, after Jesus had done all of the above of what I just said, it says in verse 35, now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight. You see, Jesus doesn't even let the sun appear before he appears before the Father. He made up in his heart that just as the sun rises every day to praise God, that he 
is going to rise every day to be with his Father, just like he rose from the grave. Before the sun came out, he was already out of the grave before the sun had risen because he made it a point every day to be with the Father. We resurrect when we get alone with him. It's the, it's the uh, manifestation of the resurrection conviction to be with our Father. And then it says he went out and departed to a solitary place. Um, the word departed is very important. This means that you, um, that you leave all the influences behind, all the noise, every distraction. You, you intentionally wage war on distraction by departing from your phone, departing from the influence of others, and then he went to a solitary place, a purposeful place to be alone, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and when they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. Why would everybody be looking for him? Because Jesus had proven that he can have success in all these different arenas, and he purposefully got away from everyone instead of taking the bait of of wanting to be needed by everyone. You see, a lot of us have this, this feeling sometimes where we wanna be needed, we wanna be wanted, and that we're led by that sometimes instead of being led to the secret place with the Father to rediscover our purpose and rediscover who we are because what happens is when they found him, they said to him, everyone is looking for you, but he said to them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also because for this purpose, I have come forth. You see, Jesus got alone with the Father so he could rediscover his purpose and that he would not be swayed by what other people needed or the pressures of life and the wants of others. You see, when you pursue God, you unveil your purpose. Your purpose is found in the sound of his voice. You have to truly see that in the morning when you make that sacrifice to be alone with him, that he sets the standard and the lens for the way you see eternal priorities and kingdom endeavors. Success is not the source of your soul. Jesus is. And this is why when you get alone with Him, you won't be moved by pressure. You'll be moved by purpose. His purpose for your life. I challenge you, start prioritizing waking up early to be with him first. Give him the first fruits of your day and watch him multiply fruit in every area of your life as you seek him throughout the day. We love you all. God bless.